Sophia Alcala. I teach 7th and 8th grade math. Today you're going to see the way that I have started grading tests. Okay, you guys, right now what we're going to do is get our test back from Friday. I have no longer put grades on tests. And my feedback is all in the form of highlighted mistakes. When is the retake for this test? Friday. Friday after school. How do you find out your grade? You go on Power School tomorrow. It will be posted tomorrow. Here we go. For me, I really want every interaction I have with a kid to be a learning moment. What I was finding when I was handing back tests the old way where I put a grade on it is kids would look at their grade, decide whether they were good at math or not, and put the test away and never look at it again. I want you to look at this next one. By not putting a grade on the test, I feel like what I'm allowing them to do is kind of wrestle with the math that they produced for me first and think of the grade second. When I first did this, the number one question I would get every time I passed back a test is, what's my grade on this? How many points is this problem worth? And I had to do a lot of, remember, your grade in seventh grade isn't nearly as important as how much math you learn. So that took a lot of reframing for them. And at this point, very few kids will ask me their grade. And most of the questions that I get are about the math. I want to show you, before we get your test back, some of my favorite mistakes that came up a couple times. These could be from any of my classes. Negative 4 times 2x minus 3 equals 28. I highlighted that 2x equals 7. Tell your group what is wrong with this. I am highlighting where their mistake is, but I'm not mentioning specifically what that mistake is. If 2x equals 7, then wouldn't it be 7 minus 3, which is 4? Uh -huh. But then negative 4 times 4 is negative 16, not, not 28. Beautiful. So it becomes part of the classwork of getting a test back to figure out why they made a mistake in this particular step. So I see that now when I give test back, they're continuing to learn. Why did I highlight that x? Pema? Because if x is 3 and then the fraction is equal to 1. So what should they have written instead to talk to your group? Yeah, no, they, they being, it'd have to be 9 over 3. Uh, they forgot what they were right covering now. up. They should have written um, x over 3 equals 3. Right. So I'm going to hand out your test. Can you guys look at your mistakes? and see if you understand them. If you don't understand them, can you talk to your neighbor or me? How'd I get negative four? How'd I get that? What'd you put? What was X? When you add negative five, does it go this way or this way? Negative three times five equals negative 15. Ah. So you really can't look at the number of highlights and determine your grade. It is a much more involved and nuanced process of understanding what types of mistakes this kid is making and how important are those mistakes in terms of learning math. What happened here? Um, yeah, you just didn't finish. I almost put that one up. I really like that one. I grade the tests in two go-rounds. I first read from top to bottom the whole test, and I'm looking for the moment when the mistake gets made. So it's very important to me that I highlight only the mistake and then I explain to them that the answer they got was actually the wrong answer, but it wasn't at that point in the problem that they messed up. So I call it flow through credit. So these are two good examples of flow through credit. Here's one where they made a mistake early on in the problem, but then didn't make any other mistakes. So their mistake flowed through the problem perfectly. They only lost points for this. In this problem, they made a mistake. And then, even if I assumed this whole line to be correct, they got this wrong based on this. So they would lose points for both lines of this problem. The other advantage is, is I can highlight things that I wouldn't even take points off for. So for instance, on today's test, I highlighted if they didn't write that it was the number of treats that Lucia baked, 
but I actually didn't take off any points for that because they're going to be fine going forward. But I want to bring their attention to that. Oh, nice. Yeah, I did the Ruby's Chase with a number of them. Once I've done all of that, I look at all the tests a second time. And now I'm looking at the test as a whole, and I'm saying, what kind of mistakes is this child making? Are there common mistakes that are happening over and over again, or are there lots of different types of mistakes? What happened here? It was, I, I thought it was adding instead of yeah. Okay, so similar mistakes there. That's really good. If they have something in their mind that works, and they're applying that mistake over and over again, I'm not going to take off a point from every problem for that. Oh. That's an easy mistake for me to fix because we just have to have that one conversation versus if they're just doing random things all over the place. Both of those tests might have a lot of highlights on them, but one would definitely have a much higher grade than the other. Why is that wrong? <laughs> because um, negative 15x plus 2x is um, negative 13x. Beautiful. Can you fix it from there? One piece of advice is that it doesn't take longer to grade tests this way. I think that was a big fear. It is a similar amount of time, and it's far more enjoyable. I felt highlight happy. My hope is that through this strategy, they see that studying their mistakes and learning from their mistakes is really what learning is. What happened here? This plus negative five. Plus negative five. Everything else was perfect, including your negative sign. Why is this wrong? I allow them to retake the test whenever they want, and I'll give them a new version of the test. Often kids need to sit with me a little bit more before they're ready to retake, so they'll come see me at lunch or during advisory, and we'll go over it. I didn't really understand it. Oh, do you know what to do now? Yeah, the what distributive was, property. Yeah, why don't you do that right now? This one surprised me. Right here, the wrong way. So to normalize the process of making mistakes is very much my goal for these kids. It allows them to take more risks.